Sabal, my brother and sister, is the Superintendent Janice Battersby of Shekinah Worship International Ministries, Shekinah Worship Center, Bermuda, greeting you one more time with another installation of our exciting series, Insights with Sue. Our pastor is Reverend Dr. Maria A. Seaman, and it's a pleasure to bring greetings on her behalf as we share with you another lesson in this exciting series, Escape the Coming Night. It's a series in a study of the book of Revelation by Dr. David Jeremiah. And we've been studying this series for a while now. It's 43 lessons, and I'm gonna share with you from lesson 25. Now, obviously, there are 24 other lessons prior to this, and if you're interested in hearing them, I would recommend that you look up the podcast. And we have several locations. There's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts under the name Real Knows Real. Now, not only will you find Insights with Soup, but you'll find lots of other teachings and preachings that are coming out of Shekinah Worship Center in Bermuda. It's amazing. This is a Bible-believing, bible teaching, Bible preaching church, and the richness of the word cannot even begin to be described. We're also on YouTube under Voice for Our Times. So please avail yourself, feel free. But right now what I'm gonna do is give you just a bite-sized portion of this lesson, just to whet your appetite and hopefully get your interest in the book of Revelation. Now that's a book that not a lot of people have read and even less have read with understanding. But this starting here, this series, we're so thankful to Dr. David Jeremiah, who has done years and years and decades of study on the book of Revelation and shares this with us. So let's go. This lesson in particular is called Woe on Earth, Worship in Heaven. Now the other lessons will give you a foreview of where we're at now. We've been studying the seven seal judgments and the seven trumpet judgments. And now we're just about ready to go into the third set of judgments in the book of Revelation, which are the vile judgments. Now, like I said, we've been doing a lot of reading. We're actually in chapter 11 of the book of Revelation. So we're about halfway through now the actual book in the Bible. And we've been reading about the state of the world after the rapture, after the church is taken out of the earth. The Apostle John, who wrote this book, is giving us a vivid description. In fact, the descriptions that he gives, if you look around the world today, you will see shadows of the setup of these things that are happening, the natural disasters, the attitude of mankind towards the things of God the coming together of certain governments to create a certain atmosphere into which Jesus Christ will return as king and as judge. We're seeing the setup of all of that now, the global monetary system. We're seeing it happen, the mindset, the acceptance of sin, even by the church, the compromise, we're seeing all these things. So now here, like I said, we have been studying in particular the trumpet judgments. And we got up to the sixth trumpet because there are seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials in the book of Revelation. Well, now we were in a bit of a lull between the blowing of the sixth trumpet and the blowing of the seventh trumpet. Each seventh judgment brings more judgments. So the seventh trumpet is about to unleash the seven vile judgments. But before we get to the unleashing of the seven vile judgments, we're going to talk about this particular time here. Now, I'm going to read the scripture, which is Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. And then we'll just touch on it a bit. Like I said, it's, it's nothing too deep. It's just a bit of a, of a bite-sized portion, just to, just to get an idea of what it is that we've been learning. So here begins the reading of God's holy word. Again, Revelation chapter 11 verses 15 through 19, and it says, and I'll be reading in the New King James Version also. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, 
and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. Here ends the reading of God's holy word thus far. And so here we have it. There is the seventh angel who blew their trumpet. We're now back into the judgments that are to be poured out. We've gone through the six trumpets. The seventh trumpet has been blown. And now comes this announcement that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Now, we've got to understand something, that God right now is not reigning over the earth, not right directly. Time has been given for Satan to have his way on the earth. But like what was preached in our church, Satan's on a leash. His days are numbered. But yes, he is reigning. When you look around and you see the behavior of mankind, when you see the standards of the, the world and the direction that they're going in, it's not up. You have to wonder if God is losing the war, but he's not. Satan is having his way. Mankind is being allowed to choose what he desires for himself. Satan is going about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. But Jesus Christ is going to reign. And it says here, now one, one thing Dr. Jeremiah pointed out to us is, it's not the kingdoms, there's a plural with an S of this world. There's only one kingdom. As one of our class members said, there's only one head at the table. It's not kingdoms of this world, it's kingdom. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Now, in a previous lesson, we learned that there's going to be a heavenly messenger that comes down during this pause between the sixth and the seventh trumpet. He's going to have one foot on the land, one foot on the sea, and he's going to say, time is enough. No more delay. Judgment is happening now. So whatever free reign Satan has, it's over. This kingdom is becoming the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you stand on the word of God right now, the standards of God, you're going to get so much opposition. One day that's going to end. God is going to say enough is enough. And now my standard rules. And that means Satan has got to get out of the way. And he's going to be put away for eternity. And all who choose his way as well. That brings to mind that beautiful anthem, the hallelujah chorus. The kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. YouTube it, listen to it, the hallelujah chorus. My goodness, declaration, the anthem, the, the announcement of the kingdom. And at that announcement, the 24 elders that are around the throne in heaven fall and worship the Lord. The 24 elders who represent the saints, the saved, the church, who have been raptured. They are so beside themselves with worship. They can't even sit on their thrones. They've got to lay down before the Lord and worship him. We give thanks, O Lord Almighty, the one who is, who was, and who is to come. Because you have taken your great power and reigned. We're all waiting. Those of us who are the saints of God, we're waiting for that time. Can't wait for that time to come. But it's bittersweet because we have family and friends who aren't choosing the Lord. They will have eternal death in hell. We don't want that for them. But God is going to have his way. 
kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And we see how even Dr. Jeremiah referred to the book of Daniel and the second chapter where Daniel had a vision of a statue. And that statue represented different kingdoms throughout, at Daniel's time, future. In our time, there's only one kingdom left in that statue that we would call future, but we see it forming now, and that's the feet of the statue. The, the different parts of the statue that represent Babylon, the Persians and the Medes, the Greeks, Rome, and this coalition government, this coalition global government, which we see happening now in our times. But Daniel sees a stone which no hands made destroy that statue that rock of Jesus Christ. We're seeing these things happening. Those other kingdoms are in our history now. That has come to pass. There's only one kingdom left and we're watching it. And so Christ has established the, the announcement of the kingdom. The kingdom is now coming. And we are excited about that. And then the acclamation of the king where we learn that there are the saints that had been martyred for their faith say, how long, O oh Lord, are you going to take to take vengeance on those that martyred us, for those that killed us and murdered us because we stood on your word? And here we go. The acclamation of the king, Jesus Christ, is coming to rule and to reign and to take vengeance on those who murdered his saints. That time is coming. The final judgment is Jesus Christ taking vengeance on those who hated him and who destroyed those saints, but only for a time. They can destroy your body. They cannot take your soul. They cannot do it. That's why we, 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 need to, we need to be mindful of Satan because he can't damn us to eternal hell by tempting us to choose him. Let's seek after the Lord. So now we have the anticipation of the end. And as we look at uh, the second half of that scripture, it says the nations were angry and your wrath has come and, and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Now this, I, I love this so much because what Dr. Jeremiah explained to us that in that verse 18, we read it like one thing is gonna happen right after the other, right after the other, right after the other. But what Dr. Jeremiah has explained to us is that that one verse spans thousands of years. For example, it says that, um, your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your saints, the prophets. Now, the saints, we understand, are going to be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. And we understand that that's going to happen after the rapture. While the tribulation is going on on earth, while those who are left behind, those who rejected Christ, rejected the gospel, those who never heard it, are going to be on the earth. Those saints who accepted Jesus Christ will and have prepared themselves will be raptured and stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, we haven't gotten to that in our study yet. Not this time. We've, we've had these studies for three years. So we've gone through this, and I can explain this to you, is that at the judgment seat of Christ stand the saints, and we will be judged for our works for the motivation of our heart in doing our works. Did we do everything that we were supposed to do while on this earth? Have we taken advantage of every opportunity to share the gospel, to try and win souls, the great commission, to go into all nations and preach the gospel? Have we done that? God is gonna examine our works and our hearts. That will be going on and we will be rewarded for our works some more than others. So you want to take every opportunity that you can to find out what your gift is, find out what your purpose is. God has already given you those gifts before you were born. 
Take those gifts, take those talents and give them to the Lord and he will put you in the right place. I guarantee you. I had no idea that I would be doing this. No idea at all. When the Lord called me to start teaching a Sunday school class, I didn't have a clue that this is where I would end up. And people look at me and they think that it's a natural thing. This is what God has given me. And I decided I'm going to give it to him. And now he has done marvelous things to where I can sit here now and bring this to you. What gift and talent has God given to you? Don't use it for the world because the world will give you money for it. I cannot begin to tell you the blessings that have been poured out for me. Today, I'm telling you, today is July the 1st, 2021. And I can share with you a blessings just today. And I thank the Lord. Blessings so that I could bring this to you in a much easier way. Just today. And so many other things. So I encourage you. Use your gifts and your talents and every opportunity to share the gospel. And you will be rewarded. Okay? So that is the rewarding of the saints. But then there is the, uh, the time of the dead that they should be judged. Time of the dead. And those he will destroy those who destroy the earth. Now, at the time of the dead, he's talking about those who have not known the Lord. Now, that doesn't happen at the same time as the judgment seat of Christ. That happens at least a thousand years later, after the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Now, those are later teachings, and so I'm not going to get into that too much. I encourage you to keep listening to the podcast. But, after the thousand year reign of Christ, the millennial reign of Christ comes the great white throne of judgment. And if you're at the great white throne of judgment, you are in big trouble because the great white throne of judgment is the throne of condemnation to hell. Nobody escapes hell who's standing at the great white throne of judgment. You don't want to get to that point. That's why now, before you die or before the rapture, whichever one comes first, Make your calling and election sure that you will be situated at the judgment seat of Christ to receive a reward, a crown for what you have done on the earth for the Lord. So the judgment of the saints and the judgment of the dead separated in that one verse. And then it speaks of destroying those who destroy the earth, who we understand are the demons, are those who are doing Satan's work. God will destroy them as well. They will be cast into the pit of fire along with Satan. Those fallen angels who followed Satan out of heaven to do his work. They will be judged as well. No one is going to miss judgment. Not the saints, not the sinners, not Satan and his demons. Nobody will miss it. That is the anticipation of the end. The way it is written in these few verses, it actually spans years, thousands of years. We read it and we think, oh, okay, that's all going to happen in one day. Nope. That's why you have to read the total book of the book of Revelation and have an understanding of the Bible to know God's patterns, to know how he works, and you see it all come together in the book of Revelation. We see that God is going to pour out his wrath on the nations. The nations are going to try and come together against God. They're actually <laughs> leading up to the battle of Armageddon. They're going to try and fight against God. And I mean, even now you hear the blasphemous things that people say about God. There's no respect for God, no respect for the presence of God or the things of God. And it's only going to get worse. As you have nations who now are celebrating sin, celebrating abortion, celebrating LGBT, celebrating these things, making laws for, for drugs, drug use. These nations are coming against God in every way, shape, or form. They're celebrating those things, and they are openly condemning Christians in particular. They're going to come against Christ and think that they can fight against him. And they're going to lose. That's what the scriptures say. 
you know, it's really funny because people think that this book is irrelevant and dusty and, and fairy tales and stuff. I want to know one fairy tale that you've read that you can now read in the news. Tell me one. I can show you tomorrow's headlines in the scriptures. Not one fairy tale can do that. Irrelevant. And they live happily ever after. Do you see that happening now? I think that's really irrelevant. But anyway, that's my personal opinion. But I can show you the scriptures. Then at the end, we have God's faithfulness. And in here, it speaks of the temple of God being open in heaven. And the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. Now, this is a very Jewish verse right here. And this is where it is so good to know the Old Testament. When you read the book of Revelation and you have knowledge of the Old Testament, specifically the book of Exodus, Leviticus, you see these things in the book of Revelation. You understand the correlation. God had a relationship with Abraham and his descendants. And when they rejected him, when they rejected Christ, God opened up for a period to the whole world, whosoever will. But after the rapture, all that invitation, it goes away. And now we get very, very Jewish again. And the temple you would see in the Old Testament, we talked a bit about the temple in previous lessons, that there are five temples. Three have already happened. One is to happen, and it's actually, there are actually uh, gathering materials to build the temple now that we call the tribulation temple. And then there will be the temple of revelation that he, he's even seeing here now in his vision. But the temple is what housed the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant was a visual, a some symbol, a visual symbol of the presence of God. And when you read in the Old Testament how the Israelites carried, the, the priests carried the ark wherever they went, it was a sign that God was with them. And in the ark, you had a pot of manna to show God's provision. You had the tablets of stone to show God's law. And you had Aaron's rod that budded. Now, Aaron's rod budded is a symbol of life and leadership. Because Aaron, Moses' brother, was the high priest designated by God. But he had leadership challenges, kind of like a political party. Having leadership challenges, people thought, well, we were just as holy as you are. And so God had each leader of each of the 12 tribes put their staff with Aaron's inside the tabernacle in front of the Ark of the Covenant, and they had to leave them there overnight. And God said through Moses, that when they went in there the next day, whichever rod had blossoms and was budding with almond blossoms, that was the leader. Wound up being Aaron's rod. So God put his foot down about who was in charge. God is the ultimate authority. Your leader is the ultimate authority. Don't try and step out of your lane and be something that God has not called you to be. Whatever you are, that's why you've got to know your gifts, know your talents. We're, we're talking gifts and talents. Okay, you sing. Uh, give that to the Lord. Because we know lots of stories of people that went out there and tried to make it big. They started out in the church. They got taken out and music destroyed them. Even those gospel singers, you've got to watch them too because they get caught up in the same nonsense. Stay focused on God and let him use you. In your lane. You, if he hasn't called you to be a pastor, don't try to be a pastor. If he hasn't called you to be a missionary, don't try and be a missionary. Not like how you think they are. Be who God has created you to be. He formed you with all that. He gave you all those gifts before you were even formed in your mother's womb. So God was showing his faithfulness that I'm going to be there even at the end. And those were his symbols to John in this vision. And then we hear that there are lightnings and noises, thunderings and earthquake and great hail. Again, the vision of the end times. There's so much going on at this time. Yet people still will give their hearts to the Lord. 
it's a frightening thing. But that's why we come to you now. That's why we are bringing you these scriptures now. We are bringing this lesson to you now so that you can think about it. Turn it over in your mind. Turn it over in your heart. Is God calling you? Is, is there something in there that's resonating with you? Because that's what happened with me. Even though I've been saved for over 40 years, still when I heard this teaching, it resonated with me. And now I get so excited when I see things going on because I know that the time is drawing nigh. The Bible is, the, the world is catching up to the Bible. It's now being manifested in our time before our very eyes. But if you don't know, you'll be caught out. You'll be deceived. Don't be deceived. So if this is touching you in any way, shape, or form, and you want to talk to somebody about it, you know, go over things again. If you want to give your heart to the Lord, send us an email. Swim at logic.bm. Swim, S-W-I-M, at logic.bm. Our pastor will get that email, and she will have us contact you. If it's just a conversation, if you want to give your heart to the Lord, we're ready to help you to do that. And then if you're not part of a Bible teaching, Bible preaching, Bible loving church, and you live in the island of Bermuda, we would welcome you to be a part of the SWIM Shekinah Worship International Ministries family. If you're not in Bermuda, Find a Bible teaching, preaching, loving church, one that knows what's going on, and jump in. <laughs> you could have not made a better decision. So thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for joining me. It's been a pleasure to share another Insights with Sue, and I'll see you next time. On behalf of our pastor, blessings abound. Thank you.